Good afternoon. Hello, it's Jacqueline Harris here. Today I'm wanting to talk to you all about vitamin D and why it's so important for you to have really, really good levels of vitamin D when you are trying to conceive well and truly before you start your assisted reproductive cycles, if that's what you're going to do, and definitely why it's really important for you to have good levels through your pregnancy as well. So when I st first started working in the field of fertility, so 15 years ago now, I will admit that vitamin D was not one of my standard screening tests for my patients when they were coming in to work with me for fertility. Bit of a caveat, I was working on the Gold Coast and so even when we did see vitamin D, most of my patients had pretty good levels anyway uh, because we just had really great sun exposure all year round. Uh, then when I moved to the Middle East and living and working with, in Dubai, well, lots of my patients were actually vitamin D deficient because we that it was just so hot that we didn't actually spend a lot of time in the sun for a lot of the year and of course because of cultural reasons a lot of people are covering up as well and so they're just not getting the sunlight onto their skin so that was one of my first areas where i first said okay vitamin d is really important but then since living back in australia for the last seven and a half years i've seen such a change in vitamin d i am living in tasmania um, but even regardless of that, even not the patients that I'm working with locally, a lot of my patients from Australia now do have suboptimal vitamin D levels. So I wanted to talk to you around it because I think that it's often overlooked, but really, well, let me say that not often, not as often as I looked in here in Tasmania because many general practitioners are aware of testing it, but I do see that it's overlooked in that they'll often say it's fine. Um, even if it's just above 50, uh, whereas I want to see it as good as it can possibly be. So I've gone through some really recent research and written some things down for you that I wanted to go over with you uh, because I think this is really good proof in your mind if you need it of why it's so important that you make sure with me or with someone else that your vitamin D levels are optimal. So the first was a study, well, this one's 2018, so not that recent, but it was a meta-analysis where they looked at a lot of different information and found out that there was a trend towards, I've got this written down, lower clinical pregnancies and ongoing pregnancies for women that were deficient in vitamin D, um, and that also the probability of a live birth was slightly lower in women that were deficient in vitamin D. So not only getting pregnant, but also potentially um, having a healthy baby to term was reduced by having lower vitamin D levels. But when we get really specific to fertility, there was a study that just came out this year, last month, uh, and talking about there's endless studies, but I just was going to pull a few out for you. This one was about vitamin D. They looked at it in the bloodstream and then also looked at different factors uh, within the endometrium, so different, part, different immune factors within the endometrium to see what the correlation might be with uh, blood levels of vitamin D, immunity in the endometrium uh, for women who had recurrent implantation failure with, I hate that word, but recurrent implantation failure with um, assisted reproduction. Uh, so they'd had embryos transferred, but just hadn't been getting um, positive pregnancies. And what they found was that there were high levels of this immune dysregulation in the endometrium are correlated with women who had lower serum blood levels of vitamin D. And they found that when they did uh, supplement with vitamin D, that some of those immune factors um, often improved, which is really important, I think, when we're trying to optimize everything that we can to try and help with implantation uh, when we're going through an IVF or preparing for an IVF cycle. Getting your vitamin D levels optimal is a really, it's quite a simple task. Taking the appropriate doses is what, what you really need. Um, so the standard 1,000 international units that you might get, say, in a standard over-the-counter capsule is not nearly going to be enough. But it's relatively easy when we get the doses right based on where your levels are at and enough time for us to get those levels good before you go in for assisted reproductive cycle. Now, when we move into pregnancy, and if you are already pregnant, if you're watching with me and you're already pregnant, it's still important that your vitamin D levels are monitored and maintained really closely through your pregnancy. So there's emerging research, which just fascinates me, that vitamin D levels in the early stages of a woman's pregnancy 
can influence the long-term health of her future baby. So this is really important for you to consider when you're trying to conceive. I mean, you can work, try and work really fast in the early stages of your pregnancy to try and bring up those vitamin D levels. But really the ideal time to do this is in your preconception phase before you actually get pregnant. Now, my work with a lot of people is I know they want to get pregnant. Uh, and so, yes, I know the focus is on all the things to try and actually help create a, um, you know, a healthy, viable pregnancy. But it's also about helping shape a really healthy mum and a really healthy baby. And so that's where something like assessing vitamin D can come in really important to help with the long term health of. Um, and I mean long term, not just after the baby's born, but into its adult life. Uh, different genes can be turned on and turned off in that baby while it's in utero. Um, it's just growing um, depending on a mum's vitamin D status. So really important. Vitamin D can actually cross the placenta and actually can get stored in the baby's fatty tissue in its body. It's impacting its brain, its liver. So it is really important for your little baby as it's actually uh, developing. So a couple of other studies. Um, the first one showing that um, women who had a lower level of vitamin D had a higher risk of gestational diabetes. And again, they're going, depending on when, you know, other risk factors, you may be checked in your first trimester, but again, otherwise you're going to be checked in your, for most people, checked in the second trimester for gestational diabetes. So this isn't something you're waiting until your baby's almost here. This is something you need to have ideal before you try and get pregnant or work on in the early stages of your pregnancy so that we make sure we're helping your body be really sensitive to insulin and trying to reduce the risk of gestational diabetes because a gestational diabetes diagnosis can impact the rest of your pregnancy care and in a lot of places your um, birthing options are uh, as well and so yeah that's a really important for one for us to be mindful of it's been hypothesized for a long time that vitamin d might in uh, lower vitamin t levels in a woman's pregnancy um, might impact um, things like um might impact autism and there has been so that's why it's been hypothesized there's now research that says that that's you know a possible possible factor in the big picture of it and so if they give it to a woman when she's already had one child with who has autism uh, if they give it to that mum again in her second pregnancy there's about a 20 percent reduction in the likelihood of another child having autism and so while it's um, children with autism are beautiful exactly as they are, a lot of families would like to try and reduce the reoccurrence of it. And so that's something that would be easy for a mother to try and be mindful of during her pregnancy. But that's just one piece of the puzzle with that story, that the vitamin D was just was one piece of that. So lots of information there, I think, that proves to you why vitamin D is so important for you when you're trying to conceive, because, of course, we want to help your immune system respond well and allow a little baby to implant. We want to help your body support the early stage of a pregnancy, and we want your body to be in the best shape to set up a really healthy baby for its long-term health, but also really good clinical outcomes for you and the baby in the pregnancy. So... What do you need to work on? I'm going to keep this really, really simple. Um, it's something that I assess and work with my patients really regularly when I'm working with them and as they're trying to conceive and, again, all the way through their pregnancy and the postpartum period as well. Uh, so my first step, very first, is that we need to assess what your levels are actually are. And in an ideal scenario, we would assess this before you are pregnant and ideally at least three months before you are trying to conceive. Now, I don't always have that liberty. People are often already trying when I see them, but I often do that, say, if you're trying for um, an embryo transfer or you're trying to, or an, a stimulated cycle, you might have three months to prepare. And so this would be an ideal time to assess your vitamin D from optimal. I'm not just wanting, well, one, I, I do want to make sure you're not deficient, but more than that, I want to make sure that you've got really, really good levels. The second step after we assess them is if they're not within optimal reference ranges, which are different from what your doctor's going to be just, you know, making sure you're not deficient. If they're not within optimal reference ranges for fertility and pregnancy, then we need to correct them. And those doses just depend on where you're sitting and how much sun you're going to get and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we need to correct that, which means we need to monitor it and reassess where your levels actually are. And then the third step we need to do is maintain those. So once you reach optimal levels of vitamin T, say in <laughs> vitamin D, say in your preconception phase, we still need to make sure that once you are pregnant, those levels are really good, say in the first trimester, uh, when there's lots of development happening. 
Uh, again, when the lots of fatty tissue being laid down in your baby later on in your pregnancy, we need to make sure that again, your levels of vitamin D are nice and high in your bloodstream so it can cross the placenta and start to get stored in the baby's fat, fat like it's adipose tissue. So we need to reassess it then because we want those levels to be nice and high or be getting close to your third trimester to set your baby up well for breastfeeding. We want to assess that, make sure that's really, really good. And then postpartum, we'd want to reassess that if it's been some time to make sure those levels are good um, for you, for your mental health, for your immune system. And to make sure, because we do know that some is able to be passed through from the breast milk, although breastfed babies still may need to be supplemented with vitamin D down the track. Um, so it is really important that we follow those three steps and quite repeatedly. We need to assess them, we need to correct them, and then we need to maintain them. And then we come back and we assess them. If they're great, very good, um, maybe stick on your same dose, or if they're not as good because of changes that have happened, then we need to correct those again and we continue on that cycle. So if you want me to have a check of your vitamin D uh, uh, levels, make sure you reach out. That's something that I would do in my standard consultations for fertility and for pregnancy. Or if you're working with someone else, make sure they explain where your levels are at. Make sure that they're uh, optimal and as good as they can be for both you and for your future baby. If you've got any questions as you're watching a replay, make sure you let me know about that. Uh, but I hope this has been really helpful for you and, and a really good tip you know, right now is because vitamin D is so important for our immune system at a time when the world is all going to be stepping back into full action and swing, you know, swing of everything as um, normal, again, making sure your immune system is strong is really important and vitamin D is a really important part of that. I look forward to talking to you again. I'm wishing you all the very best and I hope everything's going well for you all. Um, and just, you know, as I've said before, put comments in and I'll come back and chat with you again soon.